Solids form an integral part of our life. It is important to study more about solids, to understand its nature, to apply them for various applications. Solid State Unit 1 Part 1 Plastochemistry NCRT Syllabus Characteristics of Solids The first characteristic property is that solids have fixed mass, shape and volume. We don't need any further explanation regarding fixed mass, shape and volume. The second characteristic property is that solids have highest intermolecular forces. Look at the figure. You can see the particles in the case of gas, the particles in the case of liquids and the particles in the case of solid. The interaction between the solid particles is the highest and the least in the case of gases and the case of liquids is it is in between that of the solids and gases. The third characteristic property is that solids have least intermolecular spaces. Look at the figure. You can see the particles in the case of gas, liquids and in the case of solids. You can see that the particles in solids are closely packed and you can see spaces in between the liquid particles and also the gas particles. The spaces is highest in the case of gases. So this is because of the above point that that is the second characteristic property that solids have the highest intermolecular forces. Since there is the highest intermolecular forces, they have the least spaces in between them. The fourth characteristic property is that solids are rigid and incompressible. Look at the figure. If you apply pressure in this direction on a gas, since there are spaces in between gas particles, they can be compressed. But look at the solid. The particles are already closely packed, so there are no spaces for the solid to get compressed. Classification of solids. Solids can be broadly classified into crystalline and amorphous. Look at the arrangement of particles in the crystalline form. There is a regularity in the arrangement, whereas there is no such regularity in the arrangement of particles in the amorphous form. The word amorphous means no form. Now look at the examples for crystalline solids, sodium chloride, copper, sugar and naphthalene. Amorphous solids, glass, plastic, rubber and amorphous silicon. All these solids are quite familiar to you. Now we'll see the characteristic properties of crystalline solids. The first characteristic property is that they have definite characteristic geometric shape. This is evident from the figure. Crystalline solids, as you know, have a regularity in the arrangement of particles. Hence, they have a definite characteristic geometric shape. The second characteristic property is that crystalline solids have a sharp melting point. Now, what do you mean by sharp melting point? Suppose you start melting a crystalline solid and you note the temperature at which the solid starts melting, say 45 degrees Celsius. Now once the entire solid has melted, again you note the temperature, say 45 degrees Celsius. Now there is no change in the temperature. The temperature remains a constant that is 45 degrees Celsius. So, this particular crystalline solid that we melted has a melting point equal to 45 degrees Celsius sharp. Now, the third characteristic property is that crystalline solids have a high heat of fusion. Fusion means melting itself. Crystalline solids needs a large amount of heat in order to get melted. That is the meaning of having a high heat of fusion. The next characteristic property is that 
crystalline solids show cleavage property now what do you mean by cleavage property look at the figure you can see a crystalline solid and it is being cut by a sharp object if you cut a crystalline solid using a sharp object like a knife the cut surfaces generated will be smooth and plain this is the meaning of showing a cleavage property the fifth characteristic property is that crystalline solids are anisotropic that is they show slight different values for the same physical property when measured in different directions now let us look at this you see i have marked larger green ones and smaller red balls if you measure a physical property say electrical conductivity along this direction say ab you can see the particles the smaller particles the red ones are aligned on one side of the line ab and the larger green particles are arranged on the left side of the line ab now let us take another direction say cd if you measure the electrical conductivity along the direction cd you can see both the larger ones and the smaller ones are present on either side of the line cd so there is slight difference in the arrangement of particles so this is why there will be a slight difference in the value for the same physical property when measured along different directions so this is the meaning of anisotropy this is peculiar for crystalline solids now the sixth characteristic property is that crystalline solids are true solids i'll be explaining more about this when we come to the characteristic properties of amorphous solids the seventh characteristic property is that crystalline solids show long range order now what do you mean by long range order look at the figure you can see quartz in the crystalline form as well as in the amorphous form you can see the repeating units of the crystalline structure and it is extended over long distances now you can also see units repeated but they are not similar and they are not extended over long distances in the case of amorphous structure so this is the meaning of having a long range order in the case of crystalline solids that is the repeating units are repeated for long distances in the case of crystalline form characteristics of amorphous solids the first characteristic property is that amorphous solids have irregular shape and you know the reason of this irregular shape the second characteristic property is that amorphous solids melt over a range of temperature now what do you mean by this we discussed that crystalline solids have a sharp melting point now if you melt an amorphous solid and you note the temperature at which the solid starts melting say 41 degree celsius now once the entire solid has melted uh, say the temperature is 46 degree celsius now the temperature 41 to 46 degree celsius is the range over which the solid has melted you did not get a sharp melting point as in the case of crystalline solids this is the meaning of melting over a range of temperature the third characteristic property is that amorphous solids do not have a definite heat of fusion crystalline solids have a high and definite heat of fusion but in the case of amorphous solids they do not have a definite heat of fusion that is melting the fourth characteristic property is that amorphous solids do not show cleavage property that is the cut surfaces generated will be rough it will not be smooth as in the case of crystalline solids the fifth characteristic property is that amorphous solids are 
isotropic. Iso means same. That is, they show the same value for the same physical property when measured along different directions. Whereas crystalline solids was anisotropic. The sixth property is that amorphous solids are pseudo solids or supercooled liquids. What is the meaning? Pseudo means false. Why they are false solids? They are false solids because they have the property of flow. Generally fluids flow. But here amorphous solids has the property of flow. They can flow at a very low rate. If you happen to observe ancient glass windows ancient glass windows you may observe that the bottom of these glass windows will be thicker than at the top. The seventh characteristic property is that amorphous solids show short range order. We have already discussed this when we discuss the long range order in the case of crystalline solids. Now we can look at the summary of the characteristic properties of crystalline solids and amorphous solids. Regarding the shape, crystalline solids have a characteristic geometric shape, amorphous solids irregular shape, melting point, crystalline solids have sharp melting point, amorphous solids soften over a range of temperature, crystalline solids have cleavage property but amorphous solids do not show cleavage property. Crystalline solids have definite and characteristic heat of fusion. Amorphous solids do not have definite heat of fusion. Crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature. Amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. Crystalline solids are true solids whereas amorphous solids are pseudo solids or supercooled liquids. Crystalline solids show long range order whereas amorphous solids show short range order. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.